Hello everyone, welcome to today's video from the STEM Center at the United States Naval Academy. My name is Luke Murphy, I'm 20 years old, and I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm currently a junior at the Naval Academy, and I'm a major in computer science. This is all about computers and how they work, both physically in the hardware and virtually in the software. At the Academy, I also run varsity cross country and track, and I'm a member of the Information Warfare Club. This summer, I got a really cool opportunity and I was able to participate as an intern at the National Security Agency. I came to the Naval Academy because I wanted to join the cyber community and ultimately to lead people. In today's video, we will be learning about steganography. Steganography is the practice of hiding information in an object that is itself not hidden. The object may be real or virtual. Steganography differs from other cryptographic techniques because it not only hides the message, it also hides the fact that there is a message. Steganography is not a new idea. Even the ancient Greeks used it to send military information. An early record of steganography recounts a messenger who carried a message written on his scalp, hidden by his hair. That's some dedication if you ask me. When he arrived at his destination, the message recipient shaved off his hair and read the message. Modern steganography generally uses digital media, including text, images, and audio. The hidden information can be injected or substituted into an already existing digital file. Alternatively, a new file can be created to hold the hidden message. In either case, the message is usually encrypted and must be decrypted upon retrieval from the file. In this activity, what we're going to do is demonstrate a form of steganography using common optical illusions. If you guys want to, follow along at home, put on your thinking caps, and see if you can solve the hidden message. In the first illusion that you see here, we are asked to count the number of black dots that we see. Now what's interesting here is that in my peripheral vision, I see black dots at the intersections, but when I look at them directly, the dots disappear. This is called the Hermann grid illusion, and it's explained by a neural process called lateral inhibition, which is the capacity of an active neuron to reduce the capacity of its neighbors. Anyway. The number of black dots I can see is zero, so this will be our first answer. This next illusion asks us to stare at the fish's stripes for 10 seconds and then look at the bowl. What we're supposed to see is the complementary color of the fish. So the fish is blue right now, but the complementary color of blue is orange. And on the Roy G. Biv scale, orange is between red and yellow, so it's the second color on the scale. And that means two is going to be our answer for this question. This next one, number three, is a little bit tricky. We were asked how many legs does the elephant have? If you look closely, you may see that this is actually an impossible image, and that the elephant's feet don't match up with the legs. This image also takes advantage of subjective contours, which is the phenomenon where your brain fills in gaps in your vision in order to see a full picture. So how many legs does an elephant really have? Well, this is pretty common knowledge, but most elephants have four legs. And this is our answer to the third question. The fourth question asks us how many triangles are drawn. Again, this image tries to take advantage of subjective contour, where your brain is working against you. Although there is no explicit three-sided triangle drawn, our brain interprets a large white triangle pointing down. It does this by taking what we do see, the circles and the V's, and filling in the gaps. So how many triangles do we see? One. And this is our fourth answer. For the fifth puzzle, we're asked, how many different animals do you see? You should be able to see two different images, but probably not at the same time. A duck or a rabbit. An ambiguous picture object requires perceptual switching between the alternating interpretations. Although you may be able to switch back and forth to see one image or the other, your eyes will not let you see both at the same time. Our visual perception is created by our brain's interpretation in the cerebral cortex of visual information entering through the visual pathway. Our minds get actively involved in interpreting the perceptual input rather than passively, objectively recording it. In this next puzzle, an example of the Mueller liar illusion, the three horizontal lines are of the same length, even though the bottom one seems longer. The brain automatically perceives objects at farther distances to be bigger. In general, 
Lines that have inward flaps, such as corners of a building, are relatively the nearest points of the overall object. Lines with outward flaps are found at the longer distance, as the farthest corners of a room. So here, your brain perceives the line with outward flaps to be at the farther point as compared to the line with inward flaps, and thinks the outward flaps are longer. But like I said before, these three lines are all the same length, and number seven denotes that. So that's our answer. In this next illusion, we are asked how many different colors can we see? Now your first response might be four. The smaller squares inside the blue and yellow squares are actually the same color though. They seem different, something like magenta and orange, but as a color is perceived differently depending on its relation to adjacent colors. So there are actually only three colors, blue, yellow, and orange. In our final illusion, we're asked how many straight horizontal lines are. At first glance, you might say, there are no straight lines there. In this illusion, vertical zigzag patterns disrupt our horizontal perception. In fact, if we remove the squares, and you're not interpreting darker or lighter shades, which give the slanting appearance, you will see that all eight lines are horizontal and straight, not crooked. We now have all the puzzles solved, and we can use the numbers to decrypt our hidden message. Write the answers here on the first line and use this alphanumeric key to convert between numerical answers and the letters of the alphabet. Zero is U, and two turns into the letter S, and so on. Can you decrypt the numbers to read the message? Y'all ready for the answer? It's USNA STEM. I think the biggest lesson that we can take away from this is sometimes your brain is working for you and other times your brain is working against you. With that being said, to fully and properly analyze these kinds of problems, you really need tools and a team. As a computer science major and an aspiring cryptologic warfare officer, steganography is just one of the tools I've encountered that's used to encrypt and decrypt messages. There's many others, and I hope you guys make it to the Academy so you can experience them as well. Thank you again. My name is Luke Murphy, and I hopefully I'll see you all soon.